As you journey through this thing called ministry, do you ever feel alone? Do you ever feel like you want to be connected to your purpose partner? Uh, a lot of times when you're looking at people in ministry, they're doing ministry in pairs. Yeah. Do you ever be like, where my woman? Where my where my wife at? Um, short answer, yes. Um, the short answer is yes. I, God speaks sometimes through preparation. Yes. And so there's so much happening in me, so much going on with me, so much change with me. Like I always say this, like with all humility, and every man I pray gets to that place. I know for a fact, anybody that's been blessed by me or what God has done through me, they haven't really seen nothing yet because my rib hasn't come. I'm I'm not, I'm I'm so okay with saying that I I there is a whole nother side of who I am when she's there. I'm I'm ex that's I'm excited. Facts. I'm excited for what happens when you do it. In such a way where no, this really is the marriage is ministry. Talk about it. So, and I, I'm 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 excited for it. I know what God is doing in me. I know what God is preparing me for. Like God has so many instructions for me to prepare a place for her. We put porn to shame. <laughs> the womb isn't just about where I give Talk birth to about babies. It. Talk. The womb is about where we give birth to perfect. Talk. I was basically all of her nevers. I never imagined my journey would inspire people all over the world. You have set a standard in love. I was dating a young lady who helped me heal. Wow, yeah. this woman is a ride or die. The conversations have really helped me to change my perspective on relationships. I had 19 attorneys at one time that were speaking into my ear. 19, 19 attorneys. Attorney. My, my, my last relationship, you know, it did a number on me. What you did not know is I had a whole little situation lined up that evening. Your transparency is literally setting people free. And you're unique. You ain't like nobody else. I, I noticed that right away. You can make me cry. <laughs> um, thank you. I received that. Let one of them Barbie doll bodies walk over here. He gonna say, dear future wifey. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They gonna go right in that box. <laughs> I'm Latarius R. Whitfield, and welcome to the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Welcome to the Dear Future Wifey podcast. I'm your host, Latarius R. Whitfield. Whew, man, let me tell you something. This last week has been a whirlwind. Thank you to all of you who have been sharing this viral reel, uh, all the celebrities that have been reposting it, the news outlets that's been picking it up. Listen, I don't take none of this for granted. The reel has gotten a cumulative 50 million plus views. Let me give God glory. A few weeks ago, this happened. I got a, a, a text message this week from uh, Mr. Letaris Whitfield. Sends me a text, he says, Pastor, I'm praying this morning, and God told me to join Word of Truth Family Church. <laughs> this is the funny part, he was like, uh, can you extend to me the right hand of fellowship? I'm gonna give him the right hand of fellowship. Come on up here. <laughs> Congratulations, man. Then this. God told me, join Word of Truth. And I said, no. Mm. God said, why? I said, I don't trust church. Mm. I said, I can do ministry, God, but I don't trust church. And I didn't even realize that I was dealing with church hurt. So Pastor Evan, I want to thank you in front of the world for healing my heart, for listening to the voice of God. I submit myself to you, Pastor. Oh my God. I ask that you cover me and guide me in the things that God has called me to be. I will, I will never deny the call of Christ over my life. I submit myself to you. I submit myself to you. I thank you for using him to reach the world with the message of hope in relationships. And I thank you, Father, that greater things are ahead that he knows not of. That God, doors are, I hear doors opening right now. Doors opening, doors opening right now. There's some doors closing, but there's a whole lot of doors opening. Then this. If it does not. Oh my God. Then this.
comedian named Whitney Davis who was on the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Out of nowhere, Whitney's wig fell off. Take a look. Terry, my friend LaTerris Whitfield hosts that podcast and 41 million people. God is my publicist. Before we get started, are you still shacking up with us? If you're still shacking up with us, come on, man, make a commitment. Hit that subscription button and subscribe. Man, with this type of uh, engagement, we should definitely see these subscribers uh, closer to a million because even before this, 72% uh, of the people that have been consuming this content haven't even been subscribed. And we're at 177,000 uh, subscribers at the time of recording this podcast. But listen, <sighs> today we, ain't got the, we, we have no worries about a wig fail uh, with today's guest. Uh, we're going to have fun. I always tease this brother because he's such a prolific teacher. Uh, I look at him as somebody that's going to be changing uh, his generation and generations to come. He's a thought leader. So without further ado, welcome to the Dear Future Wifey podcast and my new homie, Al Benir C. Eugene Jr. What's up, brother? I appreciate you. I, appreciate you. I, appreciate you. I called you a thought leader. How, how do you feel for me to call you a, a thought leader? Um... Is that is that is that accurate? I mean, it's cool. I, I I hear someone who's being intentional, so I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, one thing that's unique about you is I can sense the Holy Spirit over you. I can see destiny over your life, and we'll get more into that as we go along. But we always got to drop what this episode is about. I never even told you what the title of this episode was, have I? No. Today's episode is titled "Submitting to Single Season." Mm. Submitting to your single season. Um, when you hear that, why do you think I named this episode that? Um, if I'm honest, I don't know. Um, but I, when I hear it, um, I'm going to assume you really want to really help some people who need to submit to the single season. I was talking to you. Our first conversation that we had, uh, I asked you. I said, hey, are you in a relationship? What's your, what's your dating life like? What did you say? I am single. Um, and I'm not really dating, so. You don't remember, you said right now, I'm just focusing on the work of the Lord. Yes. And it's more of a, and what I heard in that, the underlying message was, you're just submitting to the single season that you're not like out here in these dating streets, you know, in active pursuit, uh, not saying that you're not wanting and desiring a wife, uh, because you actually mentioned that as we were setting up for this uh, interview, but you're saying that you're very intentional on the work that God has for you right now in this season. You remember yes. that conversation? Yes, I do. Yeah. I do. So when you think about the work that you're doing right now, how would you quantify that or how would you explain that? Um, the first thing that comes to mind is I really do owe God. I really owe him with my life. Like I always tell people when God saved me or when he rescued me, <clears throat> what won me um, was that even in my dirtiest place, like, he picks me up, cleans me up, and then all of a sudden, like I say, he invites me onto his team, and he says, I want you to do the work that I do. You know what I'm saying? And so, like, for me, it's like, you if, you, if we're going to do this thing together, like, what do you want, God? And he told me, he said, just get to know me. And then he said, I have work for you to do. And so, like, for me, like, I, I take pride in it. Not that it's just, like, you know, I really am passionate about the work that I do, but it's like I always say God kind of, like, mixed my talents, my gifts, you know what I'm saying, the gifts of the Spirit all together in one. And so, like, it's, it's beautiful. Like, it, it's encouraging to me, but it's an honor that I get to, like, the the the, the word son in the Bible means a builder of the family name. Mm. And so, like, I, I really do consider myself a son. And I'm it, it, it's my responsibility to really help other people get to know who their Heavenly Father is. So, it's, it's an honor. You and I were talking about these videos. You'll drop a video. Uh, it gets tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of views. Um, and it really started popping, uh, uh, like really popping up in my timeline. A couple of my friends have shared your videos with me. Um, when did that really just started popping for you, where you start seeing your face popping up and you start seeing the, the view count increase? Um. Well, I would have to shout out a lot of the people in my life that I love and that really, they really 
they hold me down. But like I was, I was telling you, like when I post, like I, I literally post and I get off social media and this is what happens. I got a lot of people that love me that'll text me. Here's a typo. Here's a typo. Fix this. <laughs> fix that. I you get got, the same. Ow, you got to go back on because you, and I'm like, okay, let me get back on. And so I'll change it. But then I get right back off. Like I, social media for me, I really just like to do what I got to do and like get off. And, but what happens is like my people again, like always encouraging me, always keeping me like reminding me why I guess I'm needed. They'll send me these things like, bro, guess who just posted you? Or like, yo, they're tagging you in this. Go look, go look. And I'm like, okay, okay. <laughs> like I'm talking about like, in the, it could be like in a regular chill setting. Cause like my people know we love to fellowship and stuff. Yeah. It's just, it's really them. Like they, I got to see, you know, when you say my face popping up, it's like, they, they'll show me. Like, I don't, I really don't, I don't see it. I really don't. They'll show me and I'm like, oh, wow, that's cool. That's dope. And so, yeah, like, but when, when you ask, when, when did it pop off? Um, uh, like, I guess if you, if we use the word viral, like the first viral video, I guess that I ever did was in 2019 in January. And I was telling you how, uh, it's just all these people were responding to it, and it's crazy because it, it literally happened. I was on the phone, and I was talking to somebody about that video, like what I was going to share. Um, well, I didn't plan on sharing it. I was talking to them about it, but when I got to this this video shoot and this interview, I was like, listen, I want to say this because I feel like it's important that we hear this. It's about trusting God, and literally, like, it just took off. And then It was called Trusting God. Well, it was I, so long ago, I forgot what the name of it was. Something about trusting God. I was talking about how... When you get on a flight, you know, you don't you don't question the pilot. You know, when you're on the train, you're not bugging the conductor. <laughs> you know, you, you just get on that plane, you get on that train, and you really just trust that you're going to get to the d- destination that they're taking you. Good. You know what I'm saying? And I was just, to make it long story short, I was saying, like, how much more trust does God deserve? You know what I'm saying? As he's taking us where he's trying to take us. We don't really need to keep bugging him. You know what I'm saying? We could relax. You yeah. know what I'm saying? We could go ahead, put our little seatbelt on, and just look out the window, take our little pictures. <laughs> uh, but no, nah, yeah, that was the video. And so I, I would say, you know, 2019, 2019. Um, was when I saw, I guess, like more people besides my local um, world that really started to, I guess, connect with the page. So what are you? Like, um, what is your background or even the position? Like, who are you? Who is Al Benir? Uh Well... I hate to be deep, but <laughs> no, I'm when if you ask me who I am, I'm gonna first tell you I'm a son. Good. I'm God's son. Like I, I really enjoy being a son first. Um, I am a servant. Um, I'm a brother. I'm a friend. Um, and then the last thing I would say that I resonate with the most when it comes to my identity is I'm a soldier. Mm. Um, my family, my background is all military, like my grandpa, chief master sergeant, my mm. uncles, my brother. All military. Like, my family is literally, we're just, like, down to the T, military. And so, like, I have that, like, the scripture, um, the Bible says, soldiers don't get involved with what civilians do mm. because they can't please the one who enlisted them. And so that, like, being a soldier, being at my post, that really resonates with me. So I like it. That's that's who I am. Um, you know, I have a beautiful mom. Uh, she has three kids, me and my brother and my sister. I'm the youngest, so I'm the youngest. I'm the youngest of three. Um you know, I, you know, I'm a believer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to think of things that really build up my core. Um, but yeah, so that's if I didn't answer anything else. No, you asked it. You asked uh, the core of of who you are. Yeah. Uh, do you hold an office in the body of Christ as far as the church uh, in the local y- church? Yeah, I mean, to God be the glory, my pastors they ordained me last year or two years ago now, maybe um, as an ordained minister. Um, that's like completely left field. Um, if you would have asked me that years ago, I would have never thought that. Why? Uh, my story was always, I was raised in church. Right. I have a powerful mother that, I mean, she literally exemplified this walk to me. So I didn't really have that buffer. Yeah. In a sense of like, oh, I'm seeing one thing here and one thing there. Um, what happened was, though, I really I really did love God. And I was convinced me and God were like this. Like, we was tight. <laughs> Until, <laughs> but you know, I, I I had to really come to that place where I recognized, like, okay, like, I hate to tell the story because it might get scary, but people don't believe in this. That's why I'll share it. I saw my first demon mm-hmm. in church, um, and my mom was like, "Let's go, let's go. You guys get out the sanctuary right now." I was like, "Mom, whoa, yeah." 
you you said you saw this deliverance ministries. I was like, let us yep. let us see this because I want to see. And so yeah. we went back. She just said, no one go in the middle. Y'all stay to the side. I had one of my elders here was just kind of letting me know what was going on, make yep. sure I understand. That woke me up. I went. I was in high school at the time. It was my junior year, and I went back. I looked at everybody. I was like, yo, forget all this. What y'all talking about? This junk is real. And so what happened was. You know, people kept saying, like, you know, you acting different out. Like, you, I'm like, listen, this junk is real. Like, it is. And I can't keep moving crazy. And if, if you was to get mad at me, I look at you like, okay, are you? Because if you got it. <laughs> and so what happened was, not real rap. So God started to really minister to me. He started to really let me know my life mattered. And I can't keep living as if not just tomorrow's promise, but I don't have a response to make to the gospel. I don't have a response to make to what I know about Christ. And so... God really started to speak to me about how he wanted to use me. And I got frustrated because my reputation, what I was known for in high school, you know, I was an athlete. Yeah, I was cool. People rock with me. But at the same time, like I wasn't living consistently with what I quote unquote believed at home with my mom, what she taught us, what I learned at church. Like, and people knew our family. So they'd be like, yo, don't you go to uh, so-and-so church? Like, you can't be doing this. You shouldn't be listening to those songs. You shouldn't be. So it was this world that I had. And it was kind of like, I struggled because it's like, yo, I'm, I'm trying to be like in the world, but also, nah, me and God are like this. So yeah. don't, don't ever question my walk type thing. But nah, yeah. what happened was my I got in this crazy accident my senior year. To make a long story short, I was really frustrated, but I knew I can't keep living like crazy. I got to like sober up, get focused, because if I die, I may go to hell. And I ain't gonna lie, this may be funny, but me and my brother say every night, like, yo, if we die today, you think we're gonna have to like <laughs> because we ain't been really and so to make a long story short, I know I said that like three times. Um, I was at the altar when I went, like it was like my senior year, and this guy was like, Young man, come here. I was like, Oh boy. Cause if anybody know me from back then, I don't like when people call you that. out. They have a word for me. Yeah. Because I I'm telling you, me and God were like this. I'm not even trying to be funny. I really used to talk to God. I never had to be trained to do that. And so I knew it was coming. He's going to tell me God wanted to use me. God's got his hand on my life. But he didn't remove the mic. So I'm like, oh, he like, say this lower the mic, dog. Yeah. Like, whatever you about you, to say, say that, jack, say that jack in my ear. <laughs> and so he just started letting me know all the things that God was getting ready to do in my life. And it was dope and all, but I, I was discouraged because, again, my reputation. I wasn't known for being a quote-unquote Christian or a believer. I didn't look church. I didn't look none of that. So when I heard you're going to be used by God, I'm thinking I'm, I'm going to be behind a pulpit. Yeah, I gotta start wearing suits. I yeah. gotta start doing all this stuff, and and I I was just looking at him like, dog, you don't know me, and it's cool. Like, I'm sure God wanted to use me, but that time for me, I I probably messed it up. Like, to me, people don't know me for this, and it'd be mad weird. Like back in the day, now it's like you, ministers pop up left and right, but back yeah. in the day, if you was preaching, yeah, like, you, you, oh look who he preaching, yeah. preaching, and so like it wasn't cool to do that. So to make a long story short, some people I love at home are gonna laugh that I said that a lot. <laughs> I God spoke to me in one of my darkest moments, and he gave me an assignment. And he told me to basically go home and record this audio. It was basically me leading someone to prayer, uh, to salvation. And I was just so excited. I'm like, it's one thing for you to tell me you're going to use me versus you're giving me an instruction. And I took that with so much weight. So I just went home, my little dusty ThinkPad computer, got the program. I started recording all these audios. It was so, it was so dope. And then... He told me to drop it in February, but it was around like April. So I had to wait all this time. But he gave me month by month instruction of videos he wanted me to do. Like real this is your senior videos. year? Like the senior, your senior year in high school? In like the summer about to go into college. Okay. What happened was I called my mom. I'm like, mom, you, I'm telling you, God is speaking to me. God is showing me all this stuff and how he's, I'm, I'm, I mean, it's amazing, mom. But I said, but mom, I'm not about to be known as no preacher, mm -hmm. no minister and old pastor like i just i just want to do what god told me to do and it's it's dope like it's with with cameras i said but my, i need a camera my grandpa at the time rest in peace my grandpa he had a dslr he wasn't even using um to make a long story short he blessed with me with it um and i started doing the videos he gave me every month instruction except january remember i said he wanted me to drop it on february but he didn't give me january so i did all these videos and then i know i was with my boy we was at montclair state university late at night and i was like bro I just really, really feel strongly that people need to stop blaming God mm. for the things that they need to be held accountable for. Talk about it. I said, yo, like, because he was recording a video. I said, just keep that camera up. I said, I'm not going to look at that camera. I'm going to just talk to you. I'm going to just share what you was on my heart. But let's just get this on camera 
because it's a message I believe people are going to need one day. And I was just planning to use the audio, not the video itself. Oh. And the video is trash. So if you look at it, like the quality is terrible. <laughs> um, but to make a long story short, he just encouraged me, like, yo, bro, you need to post, post it on YouTube. And so I, I put it on YouTube. Um, the moment, I mean, like the moment I posted that video, God spoke to me. He said, son, the reason why I never showed you January is because if I showed you this one picture, this because God speaks to me in visions and visuals. If I showed you this, you would have never did any of the other instructions because you would have saw yourself as what you say you never wanted to be known as, a preacher or somebody who's trying to talk about God. And, and it was so crazy. And, I, and I, I agree with him. I said, you're right. If I would have saw this, but that changed my life. <laughs> that changed the course of my life. I went to college and from jump, like I was just known as this Christian boy that'd be talking about God. And so I just, like for, for that, from my, from my junior year, to like my freshman year in college, God was really doing such a work on my life. And people that were really close to me knew like, are you changing? And it's it's hurting because you pulling back from stuff, you're not coming around as much. And and my, my boys know like, it was a really difficult time for me because I had to, God needed me to separate. Mm -hmm. And God told me like, you know, I used to watch in college, like people used to go out, do all this dope stuff, fun stuff. And God would say, son, I need you home. I need you working. I need you focused. I need you reading. I need you studying. I want you to continue to get to know me, work on your relationship with me. He said, I'm setting you aside now because I'm going to use you for this generation. And that that changed my life. That changed my life. Now I see why you're here. Um, I told you about a couple of weeks ago, I just submitted to uh, embracing ministry from what God called me to when I was 18 years old as far mm -hmm. as preaching. And I was like you. I was like, I don't want to be. I don't want to be one of these preachers. I don't want to do that. I'm a. I'm gonna do ministry the way I do it. This right. podcast ministry to me. I don't want people talking. Oh, they're going to. Nope. Don't want it. And I. And I've run from it for quite some time. And so when I saw you pop up in my timeline, I said, "There's something over this young man's life." I said, "You are. People are getting the opportunity to see like some of the greats." In, in, in the faith, like your Bishop T.D. Jakes and those type of folks, the Miles Monroe, those people, that's you. You know what I'm saying? And I hate to compare okay. people to other people, but uh, but to give people a, a frame of reference, that's the level that you're going to be on and then some. So that's what I saw. And so I was like, because I'm telling you, I'm... Um, as a profession, as I was telling you earlier, is that as a profession, I'm a national touring playwright, director, and producer. So as a director, I'm able, when people come and audition, I can look, see them in the role, be able to say they'll be perfect, uh, uh, working opposite of this actor, see the chemistry, all this type of stuff. That's a gift. Uh, but from a spiritual standpoint, I can discern gifts. I can look at someone, just like I was telling Whitney, uh, who went viral, I said, God is going to change your life after you come on this podcast. She was going through a rough, uh, rough time in her life. And I said, come on this podcast. Your life is going to be totally different than it's ever been. I said, God's going to blow you up. Watch mm -hmm. and see. It's going to be a miracle. And so when you started popping up, I was like, who is this dude? Who is this dude? And as we, as I, I was driving, picking you up in the airport, I was making fun of you. I was saying that uh, it's like when I listen to you, it's like Jesus talking to his disciples. You're like, and listen, and as God begins to help us as we navigate through the turmoil of today and just very peaceful and serene. And I was like, this brother be killing me. And I love it so much because you're so, you're so, and like you say, you don't want to be deep, but I'll just say you're prolific. I'll say that. You're very profound, um, and you're a great uh, orator. You are able to speak with such clarity and diction and and um, a great teacher. Because if you're able to say something, and you say a lot of profound biblical truths, but you say it on a level where everybody can understand it, mm -hmm. even from a worldly perspective. You're not so Christianese where you're using all these different words and biblical uh, uh, references and all that. And you have a, didn't you graduate from theological seminary? Didn't you just graduate? Where, where'd you just graduate from? Well, I, I got my uh, bachelor's degree in Montclair State University and I graduated from Pillar College with my degree in counseling. In counseling, that's it what is, it was. It's a biblical school, so yeah, it's a biblical yeah. school. So I just, uh, yeah, felt like you had a degree in uh, the uh, theology. And so, what's so dope about you is that you're able to articulate your thoughts in a way that people can consume it mm. all across mm. the world. And that's who Jesus was: someone who could actually sit down and share parables, and people get it. Um, 
I know you've heard a lot of prophetic words go over your life. What are some of those things you've heard? Mm. Well, first, before we continue, I want to say, because God always told me, the more room I make for the Holy Spirit, or at least bring awareness to him, he moves. And I want him to be revealed through this entire session. So I want to give all glory and honor to the Holy Spirit. Yes. Like, it is the Holy Spirit that moves through me, works through me. It is because of God I have the wisdom that I have. Yes. It is because of God. Everything, I, I owe everything to him. It's all him. And so thank you for yes. your words. I really appreciate you. It really is the Holy Spirit. Um, and the some of the words that I've heard, um, you know, doing things outside of the box, mm -hmm. doing things, you know, ministry won't obviously look um, the traditional way for me. And, you know, I mean, there's tons of words. I mean, the... I can't lie to you, like, the the greatest prophetic word that I ever received was from heaven, and, like, it was from God himself. Like, he, God blessed me and delivered me from feeling like a slave, feeling like God only loves me as far as my work. God only loves me if, I, if I'm up to something. God only loves me if I'm not sinning. God only loves me. You know, if I've been on my best behavior, like the, the greatest thing that God ever told me was, son, I love you. The greatest thing I've ever heard, ever, and you talk about prophetic word, you know, that's just a revelation from heaven at his root. That When God told me he loved me, not for what I do, not for what I've accomplished, that, that, that frees you. And he says, son, your boasting point yes. will always be that you're my son. Woo! You see what I'm saying? Your so, boasting point. Your boasting point. And, and, you know, that to me, like, I, you, we could talk about all day what we've done. It, when you really get to the root of it, to know that the, the ones who storms obey, the one who literally has the power, I mean, like, he, 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 is, he is, and you get to say, that's, that's my father. That, that speaks volumes. So I, that's, I would say, my favorite word um, for me. One thing that I don't want to ignore is when you begin to talk about seeing things in the spirit, seeing a demon. Um, and I'm glad you touched on that because early in my Christian walk, when God called me to ministry, I remember I was 18 years old and we were at one. Back in those days, we used to have those midnight revivals and all that. And um, this lady was demon possessed. Mm. And I remember it like it was yesterday and yep. they start moving the kids to have the kids go into the back rooms yep. and all that type of stuff. And this lady was like going crazy. And I remember in that moment I had this, uh, one of my best friends, we like, we consider ourselves demon slayers. Like we was like, what's up <laughs> here, here? We, here's our opportunity. Like, uh, if the, that chant was around back then, Holy Spirit, activate, activate. We would have been doing that back then. So we literally, we literally ran to that lady and we literally started speaking against that demon, telling that demon to come out. We're laying hands on her. Um, um, the pastor literally in that moment negotiated with the demon and said, he said something crazy. He was like, if you let, if you just come out, We'll let, he said something that was crazy. I can't remember, but it was like a, a compromise. And that lady looked at him and just started laughing. It was the craziest yeah. stuff. And I was like, so me and my homeboy looked at him. He was like, no, nah, because it, it was, we were tearing for a long time. It was literally like about an hour, an hour and a half. And he just like, man, it almost got like three o'clock in the morning. He was like, man, if you do this, we'll let you do this or whatever. Mm -hmm. and, the, and that lady looked at him and said, ha, ha. And I, it was, it was straight up demon and i was like no 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 so we literally we said we got it from here and me and my homeboy we literally 18 years old and we land hands we throwing oil we literally just fighting uh until that demon came out and so i'm glad you touched on something that oftentimes we don't hear about we don't yes. see it yes. we don't see it in the local church anymore because church is so scheduled that you don't get a chance for a true intercessor uh yes. intercessory prayer or anything like that and literally healing and deliverance you yes. know we don't really see that and so i'm glad you touched on that that's one thing that I don't want to just skate on by because people right. are like, what? He said he saw a demon. Like, what, what, what happened? Right, right, right. You know, and they'll get lost in that. Um, from that moment, I want you to elaborate. How far did that moment go? What all did you see in that moment? Um, so I saw the manifestation. And for the people who don't know what that means, I saw the demon be revealed through the young lady. Um, I saw the demon change his voice. 
several times. I had several different spirits. Yep. Um, you know, things were thrown. I mean, you know, I'm seeing people, you know, trying to hold down, you know, if the strength was being revealed. Yes. Um, I saw the mocking of God, the mocking of yep. the name of Jesus, of course. Um, you know, there was, you know, the 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 I guess you could use the word the disfiguration of that person's vessel. You know, and and that was just my first encounter. So like, you know, there's of course every spirit manifests differently. I saw I saw the humor. I saw the, I mean, the more mocking, the blasphemy. Yep. Um. You know, I, I saw I saw what happens when people also are either one unprepared. Yep. Um. And then two don't know where the real power is. Yep. Um. And that's why, you know, it, it taught me a lot. But I, the reason why I think, like you said, it sticks with you, sticks with me, um, is because it, believe it or not. The spiritual realm is more real than all of this. Yep. And and this the, the crazy part. And this is why when I'm around people, because like I really I, you know, I'm inner city, or we would say the hood. Like yeah. when you with people who don't really understand this type of stuff, you can't assume that they don't understand this type of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. there is no such thing as a junior Holy Spirit. <laughs> There's no such thing as Holy Spirit for children's church. No, it, it's the Holy Spirit. Facts. He can speak to Illuminate, bring to light, educate anyone at any time. And yes. the thing is, though, it's a lot of people. Like you said, we don't see it in the church. The thing is, we do. The problem is a lot of people are waiting, see, for people to shine light on, yo, what you're going through is demonic. And they know it is. But but let's. I don't want to make this, emo- but it's like, it's, it's sad. And so people need freedom. Yeah. Like as a counselor, I love counseling people. It's my desire to help people unpack and things become clearer or people make progress, but some things are demonic. Yes. And so, you know, that that's why I'm just glad that the Bible says that the earth is yearning, groaning for the sons of God to be revealed. Yes. And so we, we need to be able to, like the ministry of laying on of hands, the, the the really utilizing the authority of the name of Jesus. Yes. It's like, yo, some of our friends are, they don't realize it. Some of our unsaved friends or non believing friends, or even if they practice other religions, they're waiting for you to walk in your sonship and your authority. Where you not just call out and make them feel uncomfortable. You really, we really are setting people free. Cause this, you talk about teach. People are tired. Yes. People, I'm telling you, people are tired. And I'm so tired that it's making me move. Yeah. That's really the fuel of anything I do ministerially, is people are tired. People are tired of all the talking. People are tired of all, sometimes even preaching, even though preaching has its place. Yeah. Um, but this is what I truly believe. Like, it's a quote from someone I know. He's an author. He said, people are tired of hearing about the gospel. They want to see it demonstrated. There it is. And so my fuel, you know, for those people who I know are tired, and I'm an advocate for the local church. I'm an advocate for everything um, ministry, in yeah. a sense. But people are ready to see who are the ones who are really going to take this thing serious. No gimmicks, no tricks, no mm-hmm. like this thing. And I'm not against, you know, heavy and deep preaching. My pastor always says it. If you're too deep, you lose the groove and you find yourself in a grave. Mm. And the reason why I like to talk the way I do, or why I make it my business is one, because God told me to talk in a way where someone as young as six or as old as 99 can understand. Yeah. But I heard this this quote from some. I don't think they were believer. They said, "Yo, I want you to come to church with me." It's probably from a movie I saw it. And she was like, "I don't want to do that church." So she's like, "No, no, 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 no. The way they talk about God is in a way that you can understand." But that hurt me because I'm in this place of my life where I, I really just I not just want to be like Christ because I'm human. But I, you know, we're striving yeah. to be like Christ. I'm human, so I make mistakes. I'm not always anointed. Um. This is crazy. The Bible says that the children ran to Jesus. Mm. Jesus drew crowds, but celebrities do that. Yeah, yeah. Children don't lie. Nope. But they don't play about who they run to. Yeah. Children, it's interesting. Like when a child goes, "Mm mm-mm, it's like, uh (laughs) uh-oh. That child's sensing something. But but Jesus didn't have no TD Bank lollipop. Yeah. He wasn't like... Oh, let me do these gimmicks to get these kids to run in here. He yeah. don't he don't have no carnal means. He just was himself. And they saw to it. To the point where he said, Oh, don't hold these kids back from coming from me. Yeah. Don't do that. And so for me, it's like when I think about the church, 
we should be running to the church. Mm. We should want to be in church. We should want to be wherever the spirit of God. We want we should, the fact that not again. I'm an advocate for the local church, but we need to do a better job at not repelling people. Jesus drew even the little children. Teach. I'm sorry if you have kids running to you. Really got something going on. Yeah. Real rap. You you could draw crowds with so much, and you yeah. can draw people with so many carnal means. But little kids, they're very selective. They're very yeah. selective about who they draw to, and so. You know, when it comes to the spiritual realm, I'm, I'm, I'm like I always say, I believe it is very spiritual to be practical. So yes, I love to stay plain, but I'm a very spiritual person. I can't run from that. I'm a, I'm a heavy advocate for the gifts of the spirit. I'm a heavy advocate for deliverance. Yes, I'm a heavy advocate for these things. And so you know, that's this is a serious topic. And I'm glad we didn't brush over it because yeah. people, our generation alone, again, I'm an advocate for mental health. Yes, but at the same time, again, some people are really wrestling with something demonic. One hundred percent. Yeah. We're talking about children running to Jesus. Um, one of the things that you're most reluctant about talking about is your age. And I said, people can't even really appreciate this level of wisdom unless they know how old you are. How old are you? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Um, you I know me. this makes you uncomfortable. No, you owe me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm 26 now. 26 years old. 26 years old. My daughter is 26 years old. And so... Um, the reason why I think that is so important is because in our, our first conversation we are talking, you said something that was a deterrent for me when I got into ministry at 18. Mm. Even my best friend mom, the other part of that story while we were casting out demons, she said, what are y'all doing? She had called us. She was like, what are y'all doing at that church? She said, and she's a, she's a, she's a, like in ministry. And uh, he said, y'all need to come home because on New Year's, uh, it was during a watch night service. So it was on New Year's Eve. And mm -hmm. then I said, uh, tell her we casting out demons. She said, y'all too young to be casting out demons. Mm -hmm. I said, too young to be casting out demons. Mm -hmm. And we were like, no, no, we know what we're doing. Y'all don't know what y'all doing yet. Y'all don't know what y'all doing to be doing that. That, that, you know, a demon can jump in y'all and this, this, this. We're like, no, we know what we're doing. Um, but then you said something in our conversation. You were like, oftentimes people would discredit you because of your age. They'd be like, oh, you're too young. to do. You're too young. You're too young on this. Um, and I want to talk about that because yeah. there's some – I've been watching a lot of people that are around 18 and 19 and 21 years old watching my podcast. Mm -hmm. And I almost did exactly what the people did to me in the most uh, humble way. But it was this young man I ran into at Chipotle. He's in – uh, ministry. He goes to seminary school. And um, he came up to me. He was like, you're Latarius Whitfield. I said, yes. I said, how you doing? He said, great. He said, I watch your podcast. I said, how old are you? Like, what are you doing watching my podcast? He said, I'm 18. And I was like, why would you, why would you watch this podcast? This is for like older people. Mm -hmm. He said, I watch your podcast to learn how to do relationships right. Mm -hmm. And it humbled me. I was like, wow. Like, if if it just messed me up. He said, can I buy your lunch today? Mm. No, no. I mean, come on. I mean, you, you know, I don't need your money. Let me buy you lunch. No, 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 sir. I have to buy your lunch. Mm. And made me so uncomfortable because I'm one of those people that's so uncomfortable. Uh, God's been dealing with me a lot about receiving from other people or yes. whatnot. Yes. And because uh, that's just rooted in pride. Well, no, I don't need it. No, no. You think you're being all humble. No, I don't need it. No, it's pride. Um, and so I said, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and allow you to. And he bought my lunch or whatever. But a couple of, uh, about, about a month and a half ago, he texted me and said, you are fathering me through this podcast. Mm, and God. I was like, what in the world? And so I get DMs from people in other countries that's 21 and 23 and 24. And um, God showed me something. That's why I know why you're here. Is God showed me that if he can start fixing the problem before the problem becomes a problem, in our, because the closest relationship we'll ever have is in our love relationship and dating or whatnot. You can love Jesus all you want to, but then if you connect with the wrong person, they'll, 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 you'll be like, 
you don't even know who Jesus is no more. You'd be like, God, where are you? Why did you allow me to marry this person? Why did you allow me to date this person? Because you can experience so much hurt and heartache. And so when I'm getting a lot of the young people, now I feel like an old person, when I say young people. When I get the when I get the youth with an F, when I get when I get young, young adults actually watching the podcast, it really strengthens the great commission and the assignment that God has me on. Because if an 18-year-old says, I'm watching your podcast to understand how to do relationships right, um, then that's, that speaks volumes. And so when I see someone like you, I go, what do you feel is lacking in your generation? Mm. Because y'all have resources, y'all have access to everything. It's the most, uh, y'all have, we are in the information age. Anything you want to find, you can Google it. Anything you want to learn, you can YouTube it. Um, what do you feel that your generation is yearning for, seeking, broken from, desiring uh, from your vantage point? What is the great need in your generation? Yeah, I mean, I'm only going to tell you what I believe the Bible says. I just believe the Bible is so relevant in every generation. The Bible says that we have a lot of teachers, not many fathers. Mm. The Bible says, don't let anyone despise or think less of you because of your youth. Watch this. But be an example, see, in your speech, your conduct, your love. You know, and it further goes on to say all these things, you know, practice these things, show your stuff, approve, you know, like people should see your progress. Yes. In your example. Without the fathers, you could say mothers as well, but let's just say role models. I'm finding that the best teacher is model behavior. Mm. We don't know how to be because we have not seen. But this Thanks. is why this is why a relationship with Christ helps. Reading your word helps because Jesus is that model for us. He is the example. It can feel hard. It can feel out of touch. Um, but the Holy Spirit is helping us. But it's it's the lack of fathers. It's the lack of that presence of real leaders, real men, real. I mean, of course, like I said, even women of God. The sons really need their fathers. Yes, and they need examples. I I am a I am not a product of sitting in my room and meditating just scriptures all day long. I'm a product of the elders, the reverends, my pastor. Like I owe these men so much because I'm, you're seeing so many, all their impartation, my grandpa, like, you know what I'm saying? Like my, yeah. my own father, my mother, like I have so many people that have poured into me, but like from the age of two to four, a child is watching everything the parent does. Yes. Everything. And I love, I love when parents be like, get over here, what you doing? <laughs> Who taught you that? You. <laughs> God, the Holy Spirit ministered to me, says, son, the fruit, the fruit of a parent is their children. Mm. And a lot of you not, like, I ain't going on to that long. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's very important that we live this thing in front of the next mm. because they need something to emulate. And so I, I'm a product of the people I watched. Like, I'm, I, I'm always watching my pastor, how he handles controversy, how he handles trial and tribulation. I'm mm. always watching him handle pain and betrayal. I'm watching how he handles finance. I'm watching him. And sometimes, I, I mean, he's a leader. I know he knows I'm watching, but I'm sometimes don't know I'm watching. Who's your pastor? Shout him out. Uh, pastor Jason Alvarez, you already know. Yeah. Uh, and Pastor Gail Alvarez, these are my leaders. I owe them everything. They are amazing pastors. Um, and what I wanted to say too, this is why it's so important who you choose, who you hang around, mm. because you are who you hang around. You Facts. become who you hang around, and that includes the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit. The Bible says the fruit of the Spirit are the result of God's presence within you. But in English, it's you do become more like Christ as you spend time with him. And so if you're spending time with people who do not look like anything you want to emulate, you don't get to choose who influences you. Mm. That's why I really don't like always spending too much time on social media, because if you're watching some, like if you're a voice and you're watching other voices, you, you don't get to choose. Your brain's taking in information. And it's not wrong with taking information. I tell my people, just watch your inspirations. Mm. Watch who you're feeding your spirit. These eyes are the keys to our souls. Yes. And so we have to watch what we're watching. And so for me, like, I'm so thankful that my life, if if you really go back into my story, I just been around so many older people. I never, I didn't like it at first. Always, be, you know, 
always the youngest in the room, always the youngest in the meeting, always been, hey, you can't be in here. You talk about growing stuff now. And it's like, so dang, God, I got all these older siblings, older cousins, older leaders. Like I'm just always in the meeting and I'm always the youngest, old, youngest in the classroom, youngest in my cohort. <laughs> till I picked up and said, okay, God, I see what you're doing. Yep. And so my I got to be around so much maturity. Yeah. Um, that it kept me from the height. Even in ministry, it's very difficult for me to go a lot of places because I've been exposed to maturity, sober, pure ministry to where, you know, in, in, the, in our generation, I'm not saying nothing wrong with hype and excitement. I'm a very exciting dude. I love to have fun. But even the Bible talks about not ignorantly just going about affairs in the sanctuary or the things of God. See, ignorantly, you could be ended up worshiping up other yes. spirits. And so you got to be, it's good to be around people who are mature, but our generation, we need examples. We need Crazy sounds, I'm not not knocking any other generation. I'm just saying each generation has a purpose to serve, I believe. Yeah. And so this is why I don't mind that there was a lack of, let's say, fathers in the last generation because yeah. that's going to give birth to fathers in this one. Yes. I know a lot of guys now, I mean, I would pray that they get the counseling they need and the therapy they need, but there's a lot of men I know now because of what they went through, they're going to be with their kids. Facts. They're going to be present for their kids. They're going to love their wives. And so... It's beautiful. Every generation has a story. There's revival in every generation. And so yep. I'm excited to see my generation stand up. And I just pray that God continues to use me as a voice for whoever receives from me or is hearkened to my voice. And as the Holy Spirit speaks to me, and I pray that I continue to be an example. And so that's that's what it is. It's the examples. We, we need more examples. As you journey through this thing called ministry, do you ever feel alone? Do you ever feel like you want to be connected to your purpose partner? Uh, a lot of times when you're looking at people in ministry, they're doing ministry in pairs. Yeah. Do you ever be like, where my woman? Where my where my wife at? Um, short answer, yes. Um, the short answer is yes. I I wouldn't say wonder. I just talk to God. I'd be <laughs> like, 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 let's say I had a great day. Um, and just to clarify something real fast, I'm a really big advocate for community. Never had it, but God you called me to build it and is powerful how what God has done. Like mm -hmm. shout out to my people at home. Like they're special. They're amazing. So doing life with the people you love, doing ministry with the people you love helps when you're in a community. But there are times where I'm done. Like I, I I'll call myself the church janitor. I <laughs> turn off all the lights. I clean up all the bathrooms. Everything's nice and done. And usually I'm the last to leave. You know what I'm saying? First to come, last to leave. And I yeah. have this I have this walk either to my car or to my house. And I'm I look up and I say, God <laughs> I know today was dope. I ain't saying that. I'm saying today was amazing. You know, people are blessed, and me and you were on good, we're in a good place. I'm excited. You know, I know I I get it. You're taking me places. That's awesome. I said, listen, God, but if you're gonna have me single, <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna have to be traveling. We're gonna have to be working. Things are gonna have to be exciting. And and so what happened was, I, when when what's the word first? What's the word God gave me that in 2019? He told me to start up in 2021. So after What's the Word was done, amazing. Tell people what What's the Word is. Uh, what's, what that is. What's the Word is a, a show uh, where I, to make a long story short, I elevate the Word of God in our time, showing how relevant the Word of God is, how awesome the Word of God, how powerful it is. But the main thing is to show everybody that in your meaningful relationships, like you really can talk about the Bible and have so much fun. And so it's a celebration of the Word of God and and you have one coming up in December. Yeah, December 17th is the next one. In December 17th. How can I get tickets to this? Uh, Would you on Ticketmaster, uh, you can get tickets to this. What's the gonna, word? Just, what's the word? Just put it in there, yeah. and it's in Jersey. <laughs> yeah, it's in Jersey. I wasn't planning for this, so. I don't know. We're going to know. I appreciate you. Because that's one of the things I looked up, and I was like, I may have to travel to go see that. I you know what I'm saying? Because it's so that. dope. I just love different stuff. That's nah, that's yeah. why yeah, I'm just yeah. I'm fun. so connected to you. Just just how you think, how you move. And I looked at that. I was like, oh, I like this. It's so unconventional. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, it's it's really dope. Uh, but you said God gave that to you in 2019, yeah, and so the first one was 2021. Yeah. To just summarize it, after I finished that, now I'm alone again. <laughs> so I'm walking home. I said, no, God. Today was amazing. I'm not sure. It was dope. You know what I'm saying? And and he teased me. He said, son, you asked to travel. You asked to do this fun stuff. Like my dream was to always have one of my films show in the theater. So that was like, you know, it was like first time thing. It was like, I was okay, I see you, God. And I said, Well, listen, <laughs> when it's time, let me know. Because I don't I don't want to keep doing all this great stuff and I'm missing my wife. You see what I'm saying? Yes. So, 
So it, it, I wouldn't say, like I don't feel lonely. Like I said, I have a great community, and at the same time, I'm trying to be funny. Like I really, I'm, I know him, and his presence helps me. Like I can't, I can't rob the essence of what God's presence to do for you. I'm human. I'm single. I'm a man. Yep. I'm not ever. I'm not because I don't want people looking. He said, "How holy? No, yeah, he's no, a, no, he's no, so no, anointed. No. He doesn't have, even need have female desires. companionship. I have desires. I struggle. Um, it's my people." My people hold me down. My pastors hold me down. I have a lot of restrictions on my life, but I would say God's presence helps me. And then you, his voice leads you to do things that not, not necessarily distract you, but literally will redirect your thought pattern of you thinking about, oh, you know, okay, God will win for me. But I know, I know, like, God speaks sometimes through preparation. Yes. And so there's so much happening in me, so much going on with me, so much change with me, like... I always say this, like, with all humility, and every man I pray gets to that place. I know for a fact, anybody that's been blessed by me or what God has done through me, they haven't really seen nothing yet because my rib hasn't come. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm so okay with saying that I, I, there is a whole nother side of who I am when she's there. I'm, I'm, ex that's, I'm excited. Facts. I'm excited for what happens when you do it in such a way where, no, this really is, the marriage is ministry. Talk about it. So, and I, I'm, I'm excited for it. I know what God is doing in me. I know what God is preparing me for. Like God has so many instructions for me to prepare a place for her. Um, it gets difficult because, you know, you do something for so long and then you got to break that flow so that there's room for her. You see what I'm saying? And, and, and somebody said this, I think, I forgot I heard it, but they're like, you know, at home, She's not your armor bearer. At home, she's not your personal assistant. She's she's not your secretary. And and, and I'm, I'm telling you, and I'll say this for just in case anybody else is struggling with it. A minute ago, God spoke to me. He says, son, are you looking for a wife or a coworker? Are you looking for a wife or someone who essentially would be like a personal assistant for you? <laughs> And I say, you know what, God, you're right. Because in my in my desire for certain qualities, I'm naming things that I would want in a wife, but at the same time, it's like, oh, Al, guess what? That's your wife. Don't worry. Like that's I'm glad that you're in that place where you have these sober thoughts about what you would want in a woman. But at the same time, bro, like your job is to be a husband. And so I tell people all the time, that's a mantle. Mm. A husband or a wife, that is a title. That is a mantle. That is not something we should throw around loosely that is a mantle. Marriage is ordained by God. Yes. No one else can define marriage. God ordained marriage. And so to be a husband, see, to be a husband, see, God has to really do a work in you. And you see like how the Bible says we are to love the bride, as oh, our brides, our wives, as Christ, Christ loved, loved the, the church. church. So like it, it's very pivotal for it. If you really want to be a husband, get involved in ministry. Yes. So you really learn what this thing is all about because your wife, we're called to understand her. Be sensitive towards her. You know, this is the thing. My wife don't need my preaching. My wife don't need to always hear about what needs to get done, what needs to be organized, what we got coming up. No, no. My wife just wants my attention right now, and that's okay. My wife needs me to say, hey, honey, I understand. Not come with a solution, <laughs> not hit it with the, listen, but the Bible said, okay, but what did God say, though? You need, it's like, nah, nah, let's, let's, let's. How was your day? Okay. And how did, how did that make you feel? No, I understand. I understand. And I'm, people at home going, no, that's deliverance for me. Mm. Because I, I'm military family. Everything you want to find is, a solution. Okay, what are you doing? Yeah. Okay, but this needs to get done. Yep. You, you're not, we're not sitting. No, we are going to sit in this right now. And at the end of the day, my wife, because she has, she's going to have a relationship with God. Mm. See what I'm saying? She's. She's going to do the same for me. You see what I'm saying? And she's going to know when and how to speak to me. You see what I'm saying? In a way that encourages me, speaks light to me. And she's not always going to hit me with the what the Bible says. She's going to people, oh, he just wants to be hurt. Oh, he's, he had a hard day because you know, ministry, you with people. I'm not so much scared that God won't move. It's the people we're moving with that sometimes could have you come home thinking, okay, am I, do I really want to do this? Because people, they'll do it to you. They'll, they'll stretch you, but I've learned it makes you more like Christ. It really does make you more like Christ. And so 
the journey I'm on now, um, I'm I'm becoming more like Christ so that I, I really want to love my wife how I love my films. I want to love my wife how I the people that I have to lead. Like I like this whole idea that like I somebody was saying, like you 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 love your church, you rock with everybody, but you go home and she don't get it's like, nah, that's not my portion. I don't I don't want that world. And so that's that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at. Well, I I can imagine there's a lot of women in your DMs. Do women be DMing you? Cause I know you jump in, you jump off, but you're in the gonna, times when you own, do you ever see women sliding in your DMs like you my husband? You're not gonna believe this, and I hate to say this on camera because I don't want to discourage nobody, but like I I really don't check a lot of my DMs only because it's a lot. Um but I've created other means for people to be able to stay in contact with me. Yeah. Um and so, you know, like Instagram has so many different features now. Like and so it gets confusing. They got it's like hidden messages. <laughs> Then they got general, general uh, uh, primary <laughs> requests. It's like, okay. But, you know, my people, like, when they send memes and stuff, like, yo, go look what I sent you on Instagram. Like, that type of stuff. Like, I'm responding <laughs> to. But, like, before things start to really get too overwhelming, I, of course I saw things. Um, I, it's funny. I mean, you know, people tell them, I've at least, I guess God's talking to everybody <laughs> and saying that. Uh, I got a whole lot of wives I'm your, there. I'm your wife. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so, no, nah, I mean, you know, it comes to the territory. I mean, I... Like I said, I'm around so much sober and mature leaders. So like a lot of that, like I was prepared for. Me and my boy Mike, we used to tease. We used to always say when we really go all in with Christ, like girls probably wouldn't even want to rock with us. It's the opposite. It's the opposite. It's the um, opposite. You know, but it's it's true. But the thing is, the crazy thing is about it, and I'll say this for the sake of the transparent podcast. Like I said earlier, I'm not always anointed. Nobody is. There's a difference between the Holy Spirit living in you and the Holy Spirit in a Holy Spirit being upon you. Yeah. And so I really am big on my safe space. Who are the people I know that's called to walk with me, cover me? Um, not everybody's called to know me on every level. Not yep. everybody has the grace. And I can see it very early. I can see it very early when I notice, okay, I think you like what I do, mm -hmm. not me. And that's okay. Like, mm -hmm. I have no problem with that. But that's what makes this journey a little harder. Yeah. Uh, because... You know, you, you get to a place in your life where you see, I guess, the fruits of your labor. But, you know, it comes at a cost where now you really have to start to sort out who's who. And that's, you need discernment. You need you need discernment. And it's patience. Underst it's love. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is, see, it's unselfish. It doesn't boast. It's very, you know, it, it rejoices when the truth wins. See, it, it's, love, is, love is so pivotal when it comes to this thing because pressure will make you really see people's true colors. Mm. Um, and I've, God has healed me in such a way where I can show you me what I have in my heart on my sleeve. Before I used to do this thing where it's like, oh, nah, no new friends because I'm tired of being hurt. I'm tired of people seeing me and then no longer liking me. And I, that's because I, I have my heart on my sleeve. Um, like I used to never give a lot of people my humor because that was sacred to me. I didn't really crack a lot of jokes. I didn't play a lot of games. It was like, listen, I'm, I'm here just for ministry and that's <laughs> it. Um, but you know, I've learned to just be myself and whoever rocks me, rocks me, whoever doesn't, doesn't. And it's okay. Yes. Like Jesus, he was perfect and people still talked about him. People still didn't like him. And so, you know, it's a journey, um, but it's a journey where like, if, if you're not ready for rejection or people just like, nah, I, I really can't rock with you. Yep. Nah, that's cool. With you know no reason at all. They no, just yeah. just because, just because. Uh, you said something that I want to go back and uh, revisit. You said that you live your life with restrictions. Mm -hmm. Unpack that. Yeah, so I, I'm a firm believer of boundaries are only weird, some of them, when you say them out loud. Because <laughs> Jesus said, if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. Cut it off. If your eye causes you to sin, gauge, gauge it, it out. out. Now you look at that and say, yeah, I, yeah I, this is too much. Okay. <laughs> and now he's referencing something yeah. from the text. But what I hear him saying is exactly what he said. I'd rather you make it in. See? <laughs> forget forget the hand. Look, as long as you make it into heaven, okay? Because don't, don't let this thing get you to a point where you lose out on your promise, yeah. your prize, you know, the reward. And so for me, like, I have real practical things in place that keep me because, again, and for all the young men, even women who feel like maybe I maybe I come off as I'm always perfect. I got this thing going. I don't. It's my people. Sometimes I'm weak, but I got people who have permission to speak into my life. Yes. I have a workshop called War Plans. 
where you create a plan in place when you're weak. It, it helps you identify your triggers. It helps you identify, you know, what unsettles you. And in admitting and accepting, don't try to keep going. No, you need to go for a walk and you need to go pray or you need to sit down for a second or let the, like this. It, it gets really beautiful. I can't stay on it too it's long. It's called War Plans. War Plans. That is so I will, I will I'll definitely give you a dope. format so you can really. It's, but then depending on the group you're in or community, I'm giving it to. The people who can have it in confidence have each other's war plans. Yes. And so my people know if they see certain things, if they hear certain things, they know, okay, right. on his war plans, that means this. Literally iron sharpening iron. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's so much more like there's, there's so much more. Like, I mean, I have a mother who's a praying mother. I got pastors who are praying pastors. Um, but I have, they have the freedom to speak into my life. Meaning a restriction could be you really have to allow authority to be over you. Our generation struggles with that. Yeah. And I can't lie. I, I get it. Yep. What helps me is I'm trying to go somewhere. Yep. So I'm open to correction. Yeah. I'm not trying to be funny. I recognize that it hurts mm. the rebuke. It hurts having to confess. It hurts having to check in. But I'm telling you, it that's what saves me. It's not me. I can't take no credit. Um, and I've I've fallen before because I put my guard down. Yeah. No, no, I got this. No, I no, I can handle this. No, no. And I'm telling you, yep. never say never. Yep. But also never ever es underestimate what happens if you open this door. Yep. That thing will have you like, how did I get here? Did I get here? Yep. So it, it, you got a, a practical restriction just in case anybody's watching. I don't want to confuse nobody. First, you got to start with acceptance. You struggle and that's okay. Yep. Now you have a thorn here. No. I know you've been trying to get this you delivered, but listen, right now you need a restriction. Like, like it's almost like creating like a fire escape plan. Mm -hmm. You know you better than anybody. What's gonna help you ensure that you don't go? Yeah. That you don't make that call. That's gonna keep you working. That's gonna keep you, you know, focused, diligent. Um, you you need that. And so I, I would I would love to give people that workshop, but you know, right now it's locally and I'm like, I'm going to be rolling out more workshops soon. Like as Instagram and all these other people are offering these uh, features that allows me to get more in contact with people who really want more. Yeah. I'm going to start really letting people have access to some of these workshops because they're dope. They're practical workshops. <sighs> I love it. With spiritual principles. It's dope. Boy, when I say I love that, uh, you hit on the key point about pretty much empowering people to have authority over your life mm. uh, and to be able to speak into your life. Um, over the years, I've been operating uncovered. Um, mm -hmm. I have been adverse to submitting to the local church mm -hmm. until just a couple of weeks ago where uh, Pastor Evan Connor, who was just like, he just showed up in my life and he just started saying stuff to me from just a brotherhood that was healing the 18-year-old broken boy inside of me. And it was like, I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt, God was like, I need you to join that church. And when mm -hmm. he first told me to join it, which is just a couple of weeks ago, so this is fresh, mm -hmm. I said, nah, I'm not doing it. He said, why? I said, I don't trust church. Mm -hmm. And then God began to go heal that young boy that when I tried to get into ministry when I was uh, 18 years old, um, my pastor at the time was like, I was going to go to seminary school. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't even fill out the recommendation letter. Mm -hmm. And I was like, why don't you fill out the recommendation letter? He was just, he just never would, just never would. And I was like, what in the world? And then years later, we, uh, after I ended up leaving the church, he and I reconnected and he um, asked for forgiveness for how he always blocked me and the things that I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. But that hurt at that young age because I was like, I'm excited about ministry. I'm going to go do ministry. I'm going to do this. And wouldn't even sign a recommendation letter, go to the theological seminary, Christ mm -hmm. for the Nations. And, um, but Pastor Edmund came to my life, and he just started really healing me. And, um, and it was just so nonchalant. It was such so gentleman-like. You know what I'm saying? He was just being a brother. And on the stage, after uh, he and I co-preached a, a sermon, I literally got down on my knees and I said, I submit myself to you. Yes. Um, 
But God showed me the spiritual move that took place in that moment. It was what you just said about literally saying, I have to, we, we, we live in this know-it-all society where like, I know what it is. I ain't know y'all pastors. Y'all, y'all ain't no better than me. Y'all make mistakes. Y'all do all this stuff. We, we all on the same level, right. but it's not because to whom much is given, much is required. There's a certain level and mandate over a pastor than it is just a, uh, I hate to say regular parishioner, but, but just a church goer, so to speak, because he has been governed to lead as a shepherd. Mm -hmm. And so if I have this, this arrogance where I'm like, well, you can't tell me nothing, then that same arrogance is transferable to God as well, mm -hmm. because we'll start acting like that with God unknowingly. Yes. We'll be like, well, God, I mean, I mean, everybody do this. I mean, God, that's just this, this. And it starts coming out in that, per in that relationship as well. And so uh, I love what you said about not only your generation, but, my generation, generations, period, we don't understand the act of submission. Mm. God said that he will grant, this is what God told me when I was preparing for this interview to talk to you. I said, God, what, what, do you, what, what would you have, what would you like to say in this moment? God says, I will grant your uh, petition through your submission. Mm. I will grant your petition through your submission, meaning the things that we're asking God for, the things that we're seeking God for, we're, we're, we're always asking with our hands out, but are unwilling to submit to whatever that season is. And so as we journey through this single season, because like you, I was like, God, I'm doing this. I'm going viral. I'm going all this, blah, 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 blah. I was like, ooh. Can't wait to have my wife. Oh, we could be doing this. We could do this. God said, submit to the season. Yes. It's a season right now yes. because God can turn the season around real fast. Yes. You don't know if your season is three months. You don't know if it's three years. You don't know if it's 30 days that God can be like, all right, done. Here, next level. And you're like, ooh, what just happened? You know what I'm saying? But I told people the other day, I was like, well, why you ain't met your wife yet? I said, I don't know. I might have met her. I just don't know yet. And I said, but trust me, when it's revealed, I'm moving. You know what I'm saying? I know how to move. But the the act of submission, and I said, God, I want to keep my ear as close to your mouth as possible. So it is nothing that can come in between. You relaying a message to me, I take it and I do it. Yeah. And so that's what I see over your life so powerfully displayed is that you are literally listening to the voice of God and moving when he says move. Yeah. Uh, like the old song, when I grew up, it was like, when I move, you move just like that. And that's how God wants us to be, yes. you know, but oftentimes God will move this way and we still over here trying to focus on this and God said that season is over like come on over here be like well no let God this is it's still fun I want to turn up a little bit more you know God like that that season is over come over here um and so that's what's so beautiful about uh when you're actually submitted to God God will grant your petition through your submission mm -hmm. and um that's the word for uh from God right now <sighs> Albanir I was going to say, before you close, God, I know you're about to close. Yeah, you felt that, 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 that wrap up as a preacher. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes God will love you through leadership. Mm. And what I'm, what I'm seeing is two things that I want to share with you because I said I was going to say it to you in the car. God, you said God told you to serve. Yes. God kept telling you to serve, and you've seen all these people becoming successful, but he's telling you to serve and serve. And so what I'm, what I'm seeing what I'm, and I, what I love about God is you will reap what you sow. Mm. And so I love that you're saying that you're getting involved and getting under covering. Um, and I would encourage you to be faithful and keep serving because it's so beautiful. But if you ever recognize what you're sowing, God is literally setting you up to be escorted because God moves based off principles. It'd be dope if God just started doing stuff just because. <laughs> no, but it, it, he wants to see the principle. Yes. And so as you're sowing, look at what you've been sowing. You can automatically guarantee that's what you'll reap. And, and I'm telling you, in the land of the living, Jesus said, he said, whatever you do, whatever you give up in my name for the sake of the gospel, you will reap a hundredfold in the land of the living. And so I would encourage you, you will reap a hundredfold. And so as you, with this new church, with this covering, with this leader, serve, I've learned honor. It, like, it unlocks things in the spiritual realm. And, and you, it sounds crazy, but you not just go only as far as your leader, but you can go even farther because true leadership wants you to go farther than them. Facts. But it's interesting. God loves leadership. And so it's important that anybody, even people watching, if you have a leader, if you're in something where you're serving, 
serve faithfully unto the Lord because I'm telling you, you're just going to reap what you've sown and you'll see you're being escorted somewhere. God is setting the stage through your service. And so it's a beautiful thing to serve because we want to be a part of the global advancement of the kingdom of God. Yeah. But to know that, wow, like I see where I'm going because I see where I'm sowing. Mm. It's powerful. One thing I liked how we set up the uh, this conversation is that you come from a military background. Yeah. When uh, I first got, well, rededicated my life to Christ when I was 18 years old, I used to have this Bible, and I had this Bible cover where I had a uh, soldier for Christ on it, you know, uh, and I said, I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. So everything, <laughs> I had this military mindset um, as you know, in my walk as a believer. And if you were to undermine authority in the military, that's called going AWOL mm. or you're being insubordinate. Mm. But when in the body of Christ, we undermine authority all the time. We undermine God's authority. We undermine pastoral leadership. We we undermine all this stuff because we have gone AWOL in the body of Christ and have left. Well, we just opened up the doors for anything and everything to, to come into the body of Christ, to come into our lives on a spiritual standpoint. And that's why I love when you say restrictions. You know, you didn't say boundaries. You said, I have restrictions around, you know, and I look at restrictions as if you go into certain areas, um, it's this place right by my, by the land that I have for my boys' home. You go down the street, it's a cutoff and it says restricted area. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what is behind that area? Like, what is that? Because it just looks like field. And so I began to talk to the city and they was like, no, that's, that's the Corps of Engineers spot. That military owns that. Mm -hmm. You cannot you may get shot crossing over that. Hmm. I said, it's like that. They was like, it says restricted area for a reason. You know, and then I was talking to the owner that had it before. He said, man, it's something like this one dude I saw run over there to that little area and I never seen him come back. Like you cannot cross that little area. And I was like, this is deep. But I love that you said restricted that you have restrictions in your life that says, I have to, it's not just a boundary, it's something that is restricted. I cannot allow access to these certain areas in my life or I will surely fall. And the only way that works is if you recognize you have something to lose. Talk about it. That's what that is right there. You really want me to talk? Talk. Well, I'll say this so you can close. I know you want to close. I'm learning that it's trust. If you don't trust your leader, like I humbled me one time and prayed, said, son, do you trust me as your leader? Because I came to him about stuff I was concerned about. He said, do you trust me as your leader? Um, and he was telling me like things to do even with my pastor. He said, son, whatever your pastor tells you to do, do it. Period. Don't worry about nothing else. Don't Whatever he tells you to do, just do that. And the, see, the, the context is I trust him. If I trust his leadership, people say, oh, so if your pastor tells you to jump off a bridge, you're going to do it? <laughs> What are they saying? They're speaking from their trauma. They're speaking from their wounds, their Facts. treasure. Some people aren't submitting to authority, not because they want to be rebellious. It's because every time they trusted somebody, every time they submitted to somebody, they, they got fell. hurt. Yeah. So it's like, I trust my leaders. So I trust my mom. I trust some of the people in my life. So it's like, there's times I even want to record a video like, Al, take, take that off. That's not. I trust them. It hurts. I can't promise nobody the sting of restrictions, the sting of boundaries, the sting of correction will ever go away. It's just that if you trust them, you say, you know what? This is probably for my good. And then on top of that, you know, it is when you really start doing stuff, not just for God, but just period, when you start working towards something, if you've been diligent towards something, you begin to start to see the fruit of your labor. Whole people are not attracted to broken people. Mm, I say that all the time. Whole people are attracted to whole people. Broken people are intimidated by whole people. Yeah. This is what happens. The broken people know, oh, you got stability, structure. <laughs> Listen, I'm still living a thrill-filled life, and yeah. that's going to challenge me. You know what? We could. We could probably be friends, but, the, you know, that that you know, people like that, you know, they say what? They say the excitement of toxicity. Yeah. A whole person, that, that the hype is gone. We're not, what, what's the whole person saying? We worked hard to get here. Talk about it. They don't know the nights of prayer, of crying, of tears, of the wounds that we used to go through because of the brokenness, the therapy, the money, the, yeah. the, the laying on, all this stuff that we had to go through to get to this place. People are tired. People's minds, their hearts are tired. You get to a place relationally where you say, I'm, I'm good. I, I, that doesn't attract me no more. <laughs> but then when it comes to your work, 
somebody who don't got nothing to lose are the most dangerous people to be around. Talk about it. Because, I mean, they, they literally have no reverence for not just the assignment, but for the hours you put in. Yes. Because they don't have nothing to lose. So to them, is I'm, I hate to say misery likes company because yeah. some of these people are not necessarily trying to be intentional about dragging you down. They That's just all they know. That's all they know. And so there's some people you you like, yo, I, I literally can't come. I've worked too hard for this. So I, I can't go there because I, my God told me, he says, son, your name is going to either validate people or environments or those environments or those people will invalidate you. Mm. And so I always tell people my influence I did not build. I can't promise y'all a social media strategy. I can't tell you the the things that I've done to make algorithms work. No, it God gave me influence. And so I tell people it, it's not up to me to just act crazy, post anything I want, go wherever I want, be at this fun I, I God, do you want me there? Because if you don't you gave me this influence. So I have to steward this thing. And so there are people like I I love them, but their lifestyle is is is. You talk about danger zone. It's it's like I work too hard. So it, I always tell people, get to work. You just bored, so you compromise. You ain't got nothing to really to to remind you, yo. Because if you do this, this going. Yeah. So you need some you people. Some people they need to get to work, so they can have they can look at something yeah. like, wow, God has used me to build this. And so when distraction sometimes comes, it has no power over you because th- not just not just the work that you've done is beautiful, but the visions God begins to give you about where he's taking you fall in love with that. You start to realize, wow, God, you're doing something special with my life. I can't keep going back. It's beautiful. So the restrictions is mm. you, you got to fall in love with where God is taking you, but then you got to recognize you've worked too hard to get to where you are to keep allowing the same old things who among you has hindered you? You are running your race so well. See, there's things that come. The enemy comes to derail you, to trip you up, to distract you. The Bible says, get, get familiar with the schemes of the enemy, with his devices against you. He may come at you differently than he comes at me. Your restrictions, your boundaries, your lifestyle is going to look different for you and me. You see what I'm saying? But we can't be ignorant, the Bible says, to the enemy's devices. So it's like, Start peeping. Again, war plans. Okay, how does the enemy usually attack me? Mm. What time does the enemy usually keep coming? Around, oh, usually after, when I'm around this person, I just seem to always get weak. Yeah. This person unsettles me in a way that, you know, when I'm listening to this type of music, it just does something. When I'm, it, you got to start to, I'm talking about cycles. You know, in this spiritual, cycles can get so deep. Stuff just feel repetitive. I'm talking about colors. Sometimes names, mm-hmm. environments. You like, yo, the enemy, <laughs> and because it, it's funny for him yes. to keep making you trip over the same stuff because he doesn't want to just like. It's, yes, he wants to kill, steal, and destroy, but we gotta remember, he wants to humiliate you. Facts. And so th- there is such a destructive aspect to God tearing you down, but he's got to make sure he holds your name up and say, "Look what I did to it." Remember this one? Oh, child of God, right? Yeah, hey, all right. And so you you gotta start to really get an anger towards sin. You have to get a, such a frustration for the things that take you away from God. Like the Bible says, don't let anything take the place of God in your heart. You have to, like you said something earlier I was going to challenge you on. You said, uh, like, like, yeah, loving God is okay, but it's not going to keep you all the time. I agree. But then I would say two things could be true at the same time with that. When you, what I found helps for me. When I remind myself how faithful God has been to me. When I remind myself God has been the only one that has been here through the good, bad, ugly. I mean, he's going to be the only one. When mom, dad, everybody that love you, you get cancer one day, you're done. But God is going to be there. And I tell myself, I say, Al, who do you love more? Who do you love more? You you love this or him? And that thing starts to sober me up in such a way. And it's profound. So, Yeah, man, that's powerful. And what I meant by that is oftentimes we our flesh rears up and we like, oh, yeah, I love Jesus yeah. and I love God and God is a friend to the friendless and a mother to the motherless and all that, <laughs> but I ain't got no mother for real. You know, my dad died and, I, and I'm and i growing true. up with this pain and this hurt and I'm lonely and I'm 45 years old and I've never been married and I've been honoring God mm-hmm. all this time with my body. And so these are real conversations I have with people who are 
are, are believers who've been holding on to God, people that are virgins, mm. but then they age themselves out of the mm. respectable time to, to bear kids, you know, and those are real things. Yes. And so that's one of the things that I definitely want to make sure that we address uh, yeah. as believers is that, yeah. to understand that that's a deep hurt. And so I'm still trying to understand all that yeah. because how do you console that 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 person? But how do people get, uh, get connected to you? Um, so, I mean, the best place I would say is Instagram. Like, I'm, I'm a very, I have a very private life. I love my life. I love my people. Um, I'm in a season now where we're starting to even invite people to my church, and that's kind of like, oh, my space. Uh, <laughs> nah, real rap. I mean, so, but Instagram is definitely the place. What's your Instagram? Um, this is Albanier. This is Albanier. This is Albanier, yes. And it's pronounced Albanier. Albanier. Not Albanner, not, well, what are the names you've heard? Um, um, Albanier. <laughs> I'm not trying to give people ammo. <laughs> Uh, Al Benir, or Al is cool. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He said you can call him Al. That'll work. But listen, brother, it's been amazing to have you on the podcast. I Before you. I let you go, you said you're very intentional when you uh, take an engagement. What made you decide to come on the Dear Future Wifey podcast? Um, you're good at this. I believe, I hate to make this a moment, but I, I want to speak clearly because I want people in the body of Christ to get this. I don't, numbers don't move me. But I, I need something that could be measured. I'm an analytical person. I, I need data. And so numbers I've seen, it just isn't evidence of where God is or what God is using as a means. You could pack out a house and God not be there. Talk about it. 100 million views and... and you, you, You're talking about nothing. <laughs> and, or you there is no real substance. You're saying what you know, not who you know. Mm. And so I said, God, okay. But then I got men and women of God in my life that, are, I mean, are walking this thing out. I mean, walking this thing out. And they don't, they're not getting all the views. They're not getting followers. They're not going viral. They don't, they don't barely have the money. I know for a fact they live in this life. He says, son, look for excellence. Look for excellence. I am in excellence. And so any ministry engagement, like I, I start to talk about, I look for obviously the peace of God. You know, if I don't feel like, if I don't sense in my spirit that I can contribute and really emphasize the need, it's cool. Like, you, you may want the hype, but you don't really need me. Like, you, anybody it. could talk. It, what's the need for me? And so I felt the peace. I felt the peace about really coming to co-labor with you to help emphasize and reach people. And then also I saw excellence. You know, I saw excellence. And not and anything that you've told me or any accolade that you've shared. It's more, it, it's the, the not just even the consistency but excellence, there's a there's a there's an excellence to what you do. Um, I'm, I've watched how you move. I've listened to you. I'm, I'm noticing, and you take a pride in really bringing not just excellence but the quality. You're this is God's work. One hundred. When you look at the tabernacle, when you look at Solomon's temple, when you look at the the the, the priestly garments, God is so detailed. God is not broke. God is not in. Us as believers looking yeah. broke, acting broke. No, 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 no. The Bible says that it's not just the gift of giving, but there's an ability to produce wealth. See? Because God wants to establish things on earth through his sons and daughters. So we need people who are going to be okay with stretching themselves so that there's excellence. The church, we should be the trendsetters. We should be the people. Yo, we got to check. With, what's the church doing? Because we need to get some tips. No, we looking at everybody else. Okay, what should we do? What's their template? What's their format? No, no, yes. no, no. Because God, God is, he is inspiration. The word inspiration translates to the word inspirer, which means to breathe. The Bible says that even the word of God is God breathed. God breathed on these men to write the scriptures. And so for me, I want to see who God is breathing on and I can see it with the excellence. I understand you think, you know, you don't, don't be skimped. Don't be, don't be cheap. Give the house of God, the work of God, what it deserves. I don't care if you got to save up. I don't, and, and yes, work with what you have. Do your best with what you have. That's excellence. So I, I've been to a lot of places, and I used to be struggle. Young in ministry, very young, 19. God kept taking me to these places, and I was like, God, I know you're telling me to go, but like, why are you sending me here? He said, because son, first, I want to show you what I don't want. And I had to sit and watch all of these things that I knew God was not pleased with. So that helped me. Um, and like I said, I had a piece about being here. I rock with what you do. I think what you're doing is awesome. It, it, it's really the, the foster home. I really believe in that. 
I'm praying for you. Right. I pray that God. I, I mean, I don't even. I, God is going to. I God. I'm. Wh- I want to know where God is. That that's that's why you said. Am I worried about some of the ticket sales? And I said no because if His name be lifted up, God will draw all the men unto Him. Facts. If His His work, He'll provide. Facts. That's his work. Yeah. I, I could that's I can tell for a fact that's God's work. And so I'm gonna be praying for you. Any way that I can help out, be a part, collaborate with you. The, like the, my heart is with the men, young men. That was powerful what I watched. And so I I encourage you with and that. So I didn't know you watched that. I didn't even know so you you watched what? You watched well, I, the I episode? Did, I did my research. I just kept oh. I was trying I I watched the trailer. Um I started to see like, okay, what's some of the content, what's some of the things you talk about, what's your style, what's your format. You know, there were some videos, I, not that I had to skim through because they were bad. I just wanted to kind of get an idea, get, like, what's yeah. the closing? Like, what's, so I was watching this one. Um, I forgot who it was. But at the end, something had came on. It was, the, I think, the letter. Oh, uh, yeah. But then there was something after that. I was yeah. like, oh, this like, he got a, it's a show. You got a <laughs> <Yeah>. whole thing. <laughs> yeah. But when I saw the commercial, I was like, this is God. This is going to reach so many people. It's so needed. I mean, more grace to you because it's going to be powerful. And I know that you're, yes, going to be the hands and feet as God uses you for this, but I'm praying in God that he really gives you people you can delegate to to really man this thing, govern this thing, so that it's 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 going to be beautiful. I don't I don't worry about provision when God's involved. Mm. I just don't. I don't. People spend too much time thinking how it's going to get done. Stop thinking. Just move. Just serve. What did God tell you to do? Just do that. And I'm telling you, be encouraged. So let me tell you something. That's the This is the one project. I'm trying not to even get teary-eyed because I'm going to wrap this up. But this is the one project I ever did that I don't worry about God doing. Mm. Everything else, I promise you, this podcast, God, how are you going to do this? I got to work on this. How am I going to get the camera? This is a right, pandemic right, happening. Right. How am I going to get people in town? They got COVID. All right, I don't want to do these right. virtual interviews. How, this is the only thing, and it's the biggest thing I've ever done in my life that I'd be like, all right, God, whenever people are like, when's it gonna open? Whenever God wants to open, when are you gonna get this? Whenever God wants to do this, and I'll just be like, whenever. Like it's I'm so relaxed in it, um, to where it's like <laughs> God is your your will, your bill. The you rest, know what I'm saying? The rest of God. The burden of the Lord is easy. The, his yoke is easy, his burden is light. Facts. It's peace. It's the rest of God. You you just that, and that's also, though, the gift of faith and operation. Talk about so, it. So, like, you're, you're being supernaturally empowered because it really is his word. The Bible says, and I'm done, so if, if you say something, I'm not saying no more. <laughs> the Bible says that God will give us the strength, the power to do whatever it is that pleases him. And I tell people, I say, all that simply means in English is God is being faithful to himself. Mm. God, dog. I'm in and on that. Y'all give it up for my boy, Al Veneer, C. Eugene Jr. My God. God. It was an honor to talk to you, King. That's a wrap. Ladarian thrusted suddenly into Child Protective Services in 2015. My nephew, black, a boy. The likelihood of being adopted outside of kinship, slim to none. Armani, 16 years old, black, a boy with five years in the foster care system before I even knew his name. The likelihood of ever being adopted? Yep, you guessed it, slim to none. While Ladarian and Armani were trying to survive and barely thrive in an overpopulated and underfunded foster care system, I was living my own life, doing well professionally. Having been a single father with a daughter who at that point was doing well in college, it was my time to live my life, right? Wrong. I felt unsettled, tireless, agitated. There are just too many of our black children stuck in ambiguity and in the limbo of the foster care system. In 2017, I legally adopted my nephew, Ladarian. Fast forward to 2019, I had no ties to this other young king, but I felt God instructed me to adopt him also, and I obeyed. Starting over with parenting should have been enough, right? Working with various foster care and adoption agencies to help bring awareness to the countless young black kings in the foster care system should have decreased my agitation, right? Joining the board of directors of Advantage Adoption, an organization that helps find permanent adoptive homes for children in foster care should have led to some type of resolve, right? No, not at all. None of it felt like I had done enough. I now realize that every one of those experiences was laying the fundamental foundation for my life's mission, Kingdom Royale. Kingdom Royale will be a luxury state-of-the-art home for foster boys. Our first location will be in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. We will utilize the whole person approach that instills identity, 
empowers them to advocate for themselves and enlightens them regarding new perspectives and limitless options that they thought were impossible. Though the young kings will attend the local public schools that are in proximity to Kingdom Royale, our at-home curriculum will broaden their worldview through participating in the arts, attending various cultural events, learning about and engaging in multifaceted discussions about current events and even relevant historical contexts, introducing them to gardening and landscaping and even caring for our animals on our farm and on-site stables. We just launched our startup capital campaign with the goal of raising $2.8 million. Now, why $2.8 million? Well, in 2017, I created a web series in which I performed random acts of kindness for targeting the homeless community. One of the most notable successes was that one of the videos went viral, garnering 28 million views. However, one of my biggest regrets is that I didn't raise a single dollar to help in implementing a more sustainable plan for the homeless community. So throughout the years, with much remorse, I reflected on not maximizing that moment. I knew if at that time, just 10% of the viewers donated $1, we would have raised at least $2.8 million that could have really established long-term support for the homeless community, or at least started a long-term initiative to do so. This is my do-over. This is our new beginning. Together, we can attack this at the root by specifically helping our homeless black boys who are already disproportionately represented in the American foster care system. I'm LaTerris R. Whitfield. I've been nominated for three regional Emmys documenting my work with the homeless as well as my personal adoption journey. Despite those accolades, the greatest award for me is truly providing the infrastructure for a transformed life. Visit KingdomRoyale.com for more details. Crown a king and make a donation today. Man, God is amazing. Let me tell you, this episode was powerful. Boy, I hope you got a lot of valuable nuggets and gems from this episode. I'm telling you, God is releasing his dispensation on this generation. Uh, he's doing a new thing. You have to be able to be wise and submit to this season and grab a hold of it because if not, you'll miss it and you'll see everybody else elevating and um, you still remain the same. But you got to grab a hold of this season. There's something special happening. Last year around the month of November, God spoke a word to me and said that he's going to release suddenlies. Some of the things we've been praying and asking God for, it's not going to take a long time. He's going to release it suddenly. And so I believe that's exactly what's happening. When y'all saw the video go viral, um, 50 million plus views made it to the Sherry Shepherd show. I mean, just nobody but God. Nobody but God. And if y'all remember the testimony, um, Whitney was going to take a break from social media. Isn't that like God? Isn't that just like God to be like, no, I need you. I need your laughter. I need your joy. Your, your laughter is healing people. Why? Because the Bible said laughter doeth the heart good as medicine. Y'all don't want me to start talking about that because there's so many testimonies that I've heard uh, even from that episode of how many people hadn't laughed in a long time and definitely hadn't laughed that hard in a long time. So God can use everything. He can use a donkey. He can use a wig. Here's my favorite part of the podcast where I speak to my future wifey. Dear future wifey, who are you? I mean, seriously, who are you? I'm not speaking of your name and existence. I'm referring to who you are at the core. Are you innately lovable? Let's go back before disappointments. Were you a dreamer? Did you always believe in the good of people? Were you considered gullible or naive? Did life harden you? Did you trade your feminine energy for masculine? Are you optimistic? Maybe you're pessimistic. Do you believe all men cheat so you'll store in the back of your mind that my history will be our future? Are you trusting? Whatever state I find you, just know it's my desire to negate the negative and promote the positive by the life I'll live and the receipts you'll cherish. 
Dear Future Hubby. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Remember, be lit, live intentionally and transparently, and don't stop loving. Make sure to subscribe to our Dear Future Wifey YouTube channel. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. We welcome your support. Simply share our podcast with your friends and family.